Summer 2015, a small town called Midland, Kansas. The town was known for its peace and order, home to people who took pride in their modest yet stable lives. However, this summer, Midland faced a tragedy that not only disrupted lives, but also tarnished the reputation of several influential residents. What began as secret affairs and unspoken desires quickly escalated into a series of events that shook the small community to its core. Marlon owned a successful auto repair shop that had been in his family for generations. He was respected for his professionalism, honesty, and kindness. Raising his teenage son after a divorce, he worked hard to maintain the image of a caring father and a reliable citizen. Though his life appeared calm, it was filled with loneliness, especially at night when he stayed home, repairing cars and trying to fill the emptiness in his life. Marlon was always a quiet but confident man. His dedication to work masked a deep longing for his lost youth. He often reminisced about his high school years and the passion he felt when he was younger, before life became routine. An old love, once extinguished, suddenly reappeared in his life with the arrival of Anya Henderson, the woman he had feelings for in his youth. Anya wasn't just a teacher at the local elementary school. She was the image of the perfect wife, a woman who always fulfilled her duties. To everyone around, she seemed successful, well-mannered, and the beloved wife of Jamal Henderson, one of the town's most respected men. But inside her, a different story was brewing. Anya felt that her life with Jamal had become dull and predictable. A marriage once filled with passion had long since turned into routine. She often reflected on her younger years when she dreamed of a brighter, more adventurous life. These thoughts surfaced whenever she looked in the mirror, trying to imagine herself younger and freer. Meeting Marlon reignited emotions she hadn't felt in years. Jamal was known as a hardworking and successful contractor. His company was one of the most sought after in Midland, and his reputation was built on his dedication and work ethic. To everyone around, Jamal was the epitome of responsibility and order. He was the man you could always rely on, whether for business or a neighborly favor. But beneath this exterior was a man struggling to maintain the illusion of control in his life. When he began noticing a growing distance from his wife, he became suspicious. His doubts grew as Anya frequently attended meetings and events that he wasn't aware of or invited to. These suspicions began to chip away at his confidence, and he couldn't fathom that his wife, the woman he had been with for so many years, could betray him. As Jamal's suspicions of Anya's infidelity grew, his world started to unravel. A man who had always run his life and business with an iron grip began losing control over his own emotions. His doubts turned into obsession, and Jamal found himself on the brink of a mental breakdown. Summer 2015, Midland, Kansas. Against the backdrop of heat filling the quiet town streets, the annual summer festival was in full swing. It was one of the town's biggest events. Local farmers showcased their goods. Kids ran across lawns with ice cream in hand and adults gathered, chatting about business and catching up on the latest news. It was here, amidst the bustle of conversation and the scent of fried food, that Marlon Wilson and Anya Henderson crossed paths for the first time in years. They had known each other since high school when both were young and dreaming of better lives. Their past had been filled with hints of romance, but life took them in different directions. Anya chose a stable career as a teacher and a family life, while Marlon dedicated himself to his business and raising his son. Time had dulled their feelings, but as soon as they met at the festival, a spark reignited between them. Marlon was standing by one of the stalls when Anya approached to buy some honey from local beekeepers. Their eyes met, and in that moment, time seemed to stand still. Marlon? she asked, surprised, not believing her eyes. He, too, was stunned, as if it had been just yesterday that they sat together in class laughing at the teacher's jokes. After the initial awkwardness, the conversation turned to their past. They reminisced about their high school years and the dreams they once shared. Both felt that their meeting was not just a random encounter. There was something deeper, a revival of something long lost. After the festival, Marlon and Anya began secretly meeting. At first, it was innocent. Coffee at a cafe on the outskirts of town where few knew them. They talked about their lives and shared the frustrations that had built up over the years. But soon their meetings took on a more intimate nature. Marlon and Anya were extremely cautious. 
In a small town where everyone knew each other, hiding something like this was nearly impossible. But they knew they had to remain unnoticed. They started seeking places outside the town where no one would recognize them. One of those places was a luxurious hotel on the outskirts of a nearby city. It was an elegant and expensive hotel, far from the usual haunts of Midland locals. They chose rooms with private entrances to avoid running into others. Their encounters were filled with passion and the thrill of forbidden pleasure. Both knew they were treading dangerous ground, but couldn't bring themselves to stop. For Anya, it was an escape from the mundanity of her marriage. For Marlon, it was a chance to feel what he had long lost. However, passion and secrets rarely go unnoticed. Over time, Marlon and Anya grew nervous. They feared that someone might see them. Every time they met at the hotel or a secluded cafe, they glanced over their shoulders, noticing even the slightest signs of being watched. Anya began feeling conflicted. On one hand, her affair with Marlon filled her life with meaning and emotions she hadn't felt in years. On the other hand, she knew their relationship could destroy not only her life, but also Marlon's, her husband Jamal's, and their friends' lives. Marlon, though enjoying their meetings, knew their dangerous game couldn't continue forever. He sensed growing tension and suspicion from Jamal, who had started noticing changes in his wife's behavior. But instead of stopping, this only intensified their passion. By the fall of 2015, a few months after Marlon and Anya's affair began, Jamal Henderson noticed more changes in his wife's behavior. She had become more distant, often absent in the evenings, and rarely met his gaze. Although Anya tried to hide her feelings in secret meetings with Marlon, her inner tension and anxiety began to show in small ways. Jamal, a sharp-minded and naturally suspicious man, couldn't ignore these changes. Instead of confronting Anya immediately, he devised a clever psychological game to break her and Marlon apart. Jamal didn't confront Anya with his suspicions directly. Instead, he began subtly nudging her toward revealing her secrets, creating situations where she might feel insecure. He started asking her seemingly innocent questions like, how was your day at work? Or, haven't you been working a bit too much lately? His tone was friendly, but there was always something unsettling behind his words. Each time Anya answered, Jamal would watch her intently, as if trying to read her thoughts. He also started dropping hints, as though he knew more than she thought. For instance, during dinner one night, he casually mentioned, You know, I recently heard about one of our friends being torn between her husband and a lover. That never ends well, does it? His words hung in the air, causing Anya to freeze for a moment before she responded. Jamal didn't stop at just words. He began leaving small but disturbing clues. For example, he would accidentally forget his things in Anya's car, knowing she was using it to meet Marlon. Another time, he sent her a message asking, Were you downtown today? Knowing full well she had been there with Marlon. The most troubling part was when Jamal started orchestrating encounters where he believed Anya's affair could be exposed. One night he suggested they go to dinner at a restaurant where he knew Anya and Marlon had previously met. Anya spent the whole evening on edge expecting to run into Marlon at any moment, though it didn't happen. Still, the mere fact that Jamal had chosen that specific restaurant made her wonder if he knew about the affair or if it was just a coincidence. Soon, Anya began noticing even more alarming signs. Her email had been hacked. One day, she discovered that someone had read her personal messages and even deleted some. She suspected it might have been Jamal, but had no proof. Then strange messages started arriving on her phone from unknown numbers. You think you can hide or your secret won't stay hidden? These messages pushed her into a state of panic, but she couldn't tell anyone about them because that would mean confessing to her affair. Anya tried convincing herself it was just nerves. She started doubting her sanity, wondering if she was imagining everything. But with each new message, each strange coincidence, and every unsettling look from Jamal, she felt more and more like someone was watching her. Her mental state deteriorated. Anya became afraid to leave the house alone, frequently glancing over her shoulder, thinking someone was following her. Her hands shook when she checked her email or opened messages. She couldn't shake the feeling that she was constantly being observed. Even when she was with Marlon, she sensed that their affair could be uncovered at any moment. However, Marlon didn't fully understand the depth of her fears. He tried to reassure her that everything was under control, but Anya could no longer trust him as she once had. 
Jamal was playing with her mind, causing her to lose her grip on reality and slowly eroding her ability to assess the situation clearly. Jamal continued his psychological game, keeping his cards close to his chest. He created an atmosphere of uncertainty and fear, pushing Anya to the brink of a nervous breakdown while carefully planning his next move. By the fall of 2015, as Jamal's suspicions about Anya's infidelity grew into an obsession, he decided to take more active steps, though still in secret. Instead of direct confrontation, Jamal began manipulating the situation, gradually weakening Anya's psychological resilience. He used his power and control to instill doubt, fear, and guilt in her. One of his main tools of manipulation became photographs that Jamal either accidentally took or obtained. He sent Anya a few pictures that captured her meetings with Marlon. The photos looked innocent. They could have been taken by anyone in public places, but they clearly showed Anya and Marlon together. In one email, Jamal wrote, You said you were at work. Funny because I saw you at that cafe on the corner. This message shattered her inner world. Anya struggled to figure out if Jamal truly knew everything or if these were just insinuations. He never made outright accusations, but his actions spoke louder than words. This was the beginning of his psychological warfare. Jamal aimed to tear Anya apart with fear of being exposed while she tried desperately to maintain her composure. She no longer felt safe, even in the most ordinary situations. At the same time, Jamal started using his technical skills to increase the pressure. He hacked into Anya's phone and personal messages. She began receiving strange calls from unknown numbers in the evenings. And when she answered, all she heard was muffled noise or heavy breathing. Her fear grew. Every time she checked her phone, her heart raced, expecting another threatening message or ominous hint. She also started receiving odd text messages, supposedly from Marlon, though the style seemed uncharacteristic of him. One of the messages said, I have to leave. We can't continue this anymore. Anya panicked, realizing something was wrong, but she couldn't reach Marlon directly. While Anya was trying to end the affair with Marlon once and for all, he suddenly disappeared. The last time they had met was at an upscale sports club downtown. After that, he simply stopped contacting her. Soon after, the police found his car abandoned near the same club, but there were no signs of struggle or foul play. It seemed like a mystery. How could a man just vanish, leaving his car in a public place? Jamal, knowing that Anya was losing her grip on reality, ramped up his pressure. He hacked Marlon's phone and began sending messages to Anya, as if from Marlon, creating the illusion that he had run off, possibly with money or to another country. I'm tired of all this. I need money and I'm gone, read one of the messages. These actions drove Anya into further panic and confusion. On one hand, she feared that something terrible had happened to Marlon, but on the other, the words in the messages seemed plausible. She was left in a state of turmoil, losing control of her thoughts and emotions. Jamal continued to support the illusion that Marlon might have simply disappeared. He left subtle clues suggesting that Marlon had planned to leave her life. At the same time, Jamal maintained a calm demeanor in his relationship with Anya, sometimes even showing feigned compassion, which only confused her further. Anya was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Her anxiety intensified, and she started seeing Jamal in every suspicious movement. Even his ordinary gestures now seemed threatening. She could no longer distinguish between reality and manipulation, which gave Jamal even more control over her. Meanwhile, the police had begun investigating Marlon's disappearance. His friends and colleagues were shocked by his sudden vanishing, but the authorities found no significant leads. The locals speculated, discussing possible motives and scenarios under which Marlon might have left. However, with each strange message she received, Anya became more convinced that something far more sinister was at play than just a disappearance. Each day, Anya felt more and more that something dark and dangerous was unfolding around her. By the end of fall 2015, Anya Henderson was trapped in fear and despair. Her life was slowly crumbling. The constant feeling of being watched never left her. Every call, every noise outside the window felt like a threat. The messages from Marlon, his sudden disappearance, and the strange coincidences like mysterious calls from unknown numbers had driven her to the point where she couldn't distinguish reality from her own fears. Her nervous system was collapsing under the weight of constant tension.
She grew paranoid, suspecting everyone around her. Anya sought support from those close to her, but Jamal, being the skilled manipulator he was, kept up the appearance of ignorance and fake concern. To others, he seemed like the perfect husband, trying to help his troubled wife. But behind closed doors, he was the one fueling her fears, slowly destroying her psyche. As Anya's sanity slipped away, Jamal, like a predator, watched her closely. He used his influence in the construction business to secretly dispose of bodies. Under the guise of renovating one of his old projects, an unfinished underground bunker, he set up a place for hiding the bodies. It was a grim and isolated site, abandoned for years, making it the perfect location for his dark plan. Jamal was incredibly cautious, carefully covering his tracks. He used fake workers and falsified documents to hide his connection to the bunker. No one suspected that the site was being used for far darker purposes than simple renovations or material storage. Jamal deliberately created the illusion of Anya's descent into madness. He manipulated facts and evidence in a way that made her question herself. Occasionally, he would plant evidence of Marlon's supposed return, but at the same time, he built a stronger case for Marlon's permanent disappearance. When the police started investigating Marlon's disappearance, Jamal expertly covered his tracks, crafting a narrative that made it seem like Marlon had simply left town without a trace. By this time, Anya realized that she needed to escape before she became a victim of her own fears. Her mental state was deteriorating, and she increasingly considered fleeing the town. She began packing her belongings and looking for ways to leave without being traced. But Jamal, who was monitoring her every move, quickly learned of her plans. He devised the perfect trap. Jamal invited her to meet at their old apartment where they had lived in their youth. He knew that memories of their happier times might lure her there, especially given her fragile mental state. He framed it as a last chance to save their marriage, manipulating her emotions. When Anya arrived at the apartment, she found the door already slightly ajar. It seemed odd, but in her panic-stricken state, she didn't give it much thought. She stepped inside, unaware that her husband was already there. The apartment was eerily quiet, and despite her inner fears, Anya searched for an explanation. Jamal, following his twisted plan, attacked her suddenly. He wrapped a rope around her neck and coldly strangled her. Jamal then placed her body in a large suitcase and loaded it into the trunk of his car. Every detail had been meticulously calculated, from the method of killing to the falsification of evidence. After the murder, Jamal coldly executed his plan. In the apartment, he left behind traces, suggesting that Anya had hastily packed her things and left. He scattered items throughout the apartment, making it look as if she had fled. On the surface, the police saw no obvious signs of foul play, and the initial investigation suggested that Anya had left town. But Jamal's confidence in his own genius was his downfall. Though his plan seemed flawless, his obsessive need for control began to unravel. The police started noticing inconsistencies in his alibi and strange traces in his actions that pointed to a hidden side of his life. Jamal had not only destroyed the lives of those he once loved, but he also demonstrated an extraordinary cruelty and cold-bloodedness. He believed he had everything under control, down to the last detail, but cracks began to appear in his perfect plan. After Anya's murder and Marlon's disappearance, Jamal developed a complex plan to stage their escape, making it appear as though they had run away together. He meticulously prepared, using Anya and Marlon's phones to send messages, creating the illusion that they were communicating after their disappearance. He wrote texts as if they were planning to leave the country to avoid being found out. The messages were filled with details that could convince friends and family that the pair had fled together. Jamal sent photos and texts, maintaining the impression that Anya and Marlon were alive and far away. To further sell the illusion, Jamal planted plane tickets in Anya's apartment, supposedly showing that they had purchased flights to Latin America. He even managed to geotag photos from Marlon's phone to make it appear they were taken abroad. However, the police, sensing something was wrong, began a more thorough investigation. Initially, they had no solid evidence to question the runaway theory, but over time, inconsistencies started to emerge. Security footage showed that on the days when Marlon and Anya supposedly sent messages from different locations, Jamal was seen near their phones. He was caught on camera near both Anya's and Marlon's homes during times when he claimed to be unaware of their whereabouts. 
Furthermore, his car was repeatedly spotted in areas he swore he had never visited. Jamal provided the police with a carefully crafted alibi, but detectives began noticing discrepancies. His colleagues and friends gave statements that contradicted what Jamal had said. On one of the key days when he claimed to be working on one of his projects, witnesses placed him near the apartment where Anya had lived. The police also stumbled upon information about the old unfinished bunker Jamal owned. During the investigation, they discovered that he had purchased it years ago, and construction activity had suddenly increased in the months leading up to Marlon and Anya's disappearances. This led investigators to suspect that the bunker might be hiding something far darker. Jamal continued to confidently play his role, trying to maintain control of the situation. However, with each passing day, his emotional state deteriorated. Fear of being exposed, guilt, and growing paranoia pushed him to make mistakes. Jamal began making errors in his manipulation of the victim's phones. He sent messages with inconsistent timing, messages that arrived while Anya and Marlon were supposedly on a flight, causing the police to question the technical side of the case. The investigators decided to revisit the old apartment where Jamal had killed Anya. Upon closer inspection, they found small details Jamal had overlooked, traces of blood that hadn't been properly cleaned, and Jamal's fingerprints in places where he had no reason to be. Jamal began making more mistakes in his statements. His confidence that he had control over the situation crumbled when the police uncovered his false alibis. He lost his composure during interrogations, and his emotional instability became evident. In one conversation with a detective, he accidentally revealed details about the murder that hadn't been made public, further unraveling his version of events. Over several months, the police gathered evidence, and each new piece increasingly pointed to Jamal's involvement. His psychological state worsened, and he eventually lost control. The police uncovered his manipulation of the phones, his falsification of evidence, and his connection to the unfinished bunker, where they ultimately found the bodies of Anya and Marlon. Jamal's attempts to cover his crimes were doomed from the start. After months of investigation, the police finally zeroed in on Jamal. While reviewing documents about the old unfinished bunker, they found a hidden entrance leading to a grim discovery, the bodies of Anya and Marlon. These horrifying clues were reinforced by his digital trail, forged messages and activity from his phone during the times when Marlon and Anya were supposedly on the run. Security footage confirmed that Jamal had been in locations where he shouldn't have been. When Jamal realized his deception had been uncovered, he lost his composure. The police arrested him at his own home, and he didn't resist, remaining in a state of shock. His face stayed expressionless, but inside he was breaking down. The town of Midland was shaken by his arrest, as Jamal had been the image of success and respectability. No one imagined he was capable of murder. The trial of Jamal became the biggest news in the county. The local press was fully focused on the high-profile case. Throughout the trial, Jamal tried to portray himself as a victim of circumstances, claiming he acted in a state of emotional distress triggered by his wife's infidelity and betrayal. He attempted to build his defense around his pain and wounded pride, insisting he never intended to kill. However, the prosecution presented convincing evidence that Jamal had planned his actions in advance. They showed that the murders of Anya and Marlon were part of a carefully planned and cold-blooded manipulation. Technical experts demonstrated that Jamal hacked the victim's phones, forged messages, and created the illusion of their escape. The court saw surveillance footage showing him near the sports club where Marlon's car was found, further revealing the sinister nature of his premeditated actions. The key moment in the trial came when psychological and psychiatric experts testified analyzing Jamal's behavior in detail. They pointed out that he was obsessed with controlling the lives of those around him and deeply consumed by jealousy. This led him to destructive paranoia, which exposed his true nature. A combination of his arrogance and uncontrollable jealousy became the catalyst for his horrific plan. Friends, colleagues, and family members also testified, describing Jamal as someone obsessed with success and power. His perfect image crumbled before everyone's eyes as witnesses and experts proved that Jamal had deliberately manipulated the situation, creating the appearance of being a victim when, in reality, he orchestrated everything. Jamal's downfall shook not just the courtroom, but the entire town of Midland. The local residents, who had long seen him as a pillar of the community and a role model, 
now had to reckon with the fact that behind this facade was a man capable of cold-blooded murder. The town could no longer remain the quiet and safe place it once was. Jamal's story was a tragedy, not only for his family but for the whole community, which now realized how deeply hidden the dark sides of human nature could be. This story became a lesson for everyone about how far people can go when driven by the thirst for power, jealousy, and the need to control others' lives, as well as how a seemingly perfect life can hide a destructive internal struggle. After Jamal Henderson's conviction and life sentence, detectives continued to explore his past. Despite his conviction for the murders of Anya and Marlon, not all details of the case lined up. As the police reviewed the evidence and analyzed his previous actions, they began noticing disturbing parallels between other unsolved disappearances in Midland that had remained open for years. These disappearances had occurred several years before the murders, and although they seemed unrelated at the time, each case was now beginning to take on new meaning. Some of the missing people had connections to projects Jamal had been involved in through his construction company. Police found mentions of construction sites Jamal worked on over the years. These locations resurfaced in connection with several disappearances, but at the time, there was no evidence linking him to them. Now realizing his capacity for cruel and calculated crimes, detectives started reviewing old cases. They found strange coincidences in documents and blueprints for construction sites where Jamal had overseen the planning and building. It became clear that he had the opportunity to use these sites to hide evidence. At one point, a detective uncovered an old map of the area where the unfinished bunker was located, the one used to hide the bodies of Anya and Marlon. The map highlighted several other plots that once belonged to Jamal's company, now long abandoned. Searching for new evidence, the team of detectives visited one of the old construction sites. The area had been abandoned for over a decade, back when Jamal was still actively working on residential housing projects. The detectives examined the site and found strange anomalies in the soil. They organized an excavation, which soon led to a shocking discovery. Among the old construction materials, they found the remains of another person who had disappeared several years ago. The remains, based on their condition, belonged to someone who had vanished from town about 10 years earlier. Forensic experts confirmed that the victim had been killed under similar circumstances, just as brutally and methodically as Anya and Marlon. The discovery stunned even the most experienced detectives and cast doubt on the previous conclusions about other unsolved cases. The most terrifying part of this story was the evidence found at the site, pointing to Jamal's systematic preparation to conceal his crimes. He hadn't just killed, he had planned every step, carefully covering his tracks and making sure no one could connect him to the murders. The police concluded that Jamal might have been a serial killer, operating for years under the guise of his respectable reputation. How many more people could have fallen victim to Jamal Henderson? How many other unsolved cases might be connected to him?